Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we are doing a very special series. We are doing Jonathan Ripto's Cosmo deck profile for our new series called Build Breakdown. Now, for the people that don't know what Build Breakdown is, because obviously I just made it up on the fly, is that you submit your deck list as well as replays, and then I, if the deck is either A, very, very interesting, and B, has to be competitive, I will take it in consideration for putting it on the Build Breakdown series. Now, before we even get into the deck profile, I just want to say, yes, Jonathan, he does have some strings. He is my cousin. But in his defense, his is a very good build. He was one win away from topping deeply inside of the San Diego Regionals last week. And like I said, I actually, I don't necessarily like Cosmos, but after playing this build, I really, really like this deck and everything it has going for it. So it runs two copies of Cosmo Dark Eclipser. This card is really good for stopping Paleozoic decks and also other trap heavy decks. Um, one copy of Dark Destroyer. This is easily the best big ship in the game. Uh, being able to destroy one monster your opponent controls and then, or being able to destroy one monster on the field, it can be itself to cycle through other Cosmo cards and also being non-targetable makes him a force to be reckoned with. One copy of Cosmo Forerunner. Now this card, uh, I, I wanted to play three because I like Sacred Swords and all that other stuff, but obviously Jonathan is the Cosmo player. He's the better Cosmo player, actually, and he decided to run one Forerunner because it feel, fulfills multiple things. First of all, it's a monster to float into. It's a 2800 attack monster. It does give you a 1,000 life points. It's untargetable. It's a really good card, but you don't want to see more than one. Three copy of Cosmo Slip Rider. Back row is still a thing. It is a light a level 5 machine type monster so it does fit a lot of criteria is going on and then one copy of Cosmo Dark Lady this is ultimately another card that I would love to run in multiples but like I said Jonathan's the better player especially when it comes to building this deck and one Dark Lady is more than enough the spicy tech card is Cyber Dragon and I never even thought about it but as you guys can see in the replay Cyber Dragon allows me to it gives me a free special summon and forces my opponent to commit to the Cyber Dragon allowing me to make other plays and if all else fails it is part of the cyber dragon infinity play next card is cosmo delta shadow another level 5 dark machine monster that could be used for an allure target and also for the infinity play one copy of wicked witch easily one of my favorite ones because it can't be destroyed by battle it's 1900 attack or card effects and it's 1900 attack and forces the opponent to deal with it uh good witch flips monsters face down and then cycles to higher uh cosmo monsters farm girl i thought this card was mediocre but the way that he plays this build, so for example, if I summon Cyber Dragon, I can pressure my opponent to get rid of the Cyber Dragon, or Cyber Dragon can clear a monster, and then the farm girl does the damage, and there's all the other crazy stuff. Worst case scenario, you can make an infinity with farm girl Cyber Dragon. It has so much synergy with Cyber Dragon. Two copies of Straw Man. Now, this card allows you to special summon your banished ships to your side of the field, or your banished cosmos. If you special summon a ship, at the end phase it gets destroyed, and you'll be able to trigger the ship's effect. Uh, two copies of Maxi because we like to draw and three copies of Cosmo Tin Can. Now, I have not seen that in a while. Unfortunately for Dev Pro, um, you can't trigger Cosmo Tin Can at leisure. So if I emergency teleport Cosmo Tin Can, I won't be able to activate its effect to reveal three, but whatever. Uh, three copies of Allure Darkness, three copies of Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion is pivotal inside of this deck. It's just really good. Um, it's two copies of Terraforming, two copies of Twin Twisters. I actually didn't like this card at first. There was actually a game that I lost because uh, I had I needed the twin I needed a farm girl and he had one back row. I knew the back row was a solemn, so I activated Cosmo Town. The shuffle cards in my deck. I drew a monster and I drew Twin Twisters. So instead of activating Twin Twisters to destroy his back row in my Cosmo Town, summoning the farm girl and then proceed to go for an OTK, I just attacked and. It didn't work out that well but twin twisters is a pretty good card i don't like it because of the discard but it serves so many purposes especially when it comes to destroying your cosmo towns one copy of emergency teleport easily still one of the best spell cards for the cosmo deck three copy of cosmo town i mean it's the field spell it's really really good uh that's it for spells for traps he runs two copies of dimensional barrier this card is outright amazing. You can legitimately flip Dimensional Barrier at almost any given time and not have to worry about what your opponent is doing because, because when you flip Dimensional Barrier in this deck, you're sitting on 3,000 untargetable beaters. So, kind of, you know, 
it doesn't really help your opponent. Uh, one copy of Oasis of the Dragon Souls. Now, I would really want to learn Cosmojo, and I'd probably take an Oasis Dragon Souls out for it, but I understand why he runs the three color hunting and the Oasis Dragon Souls. He has so many big ships, and he runs three copies of Cosmo Tinkan. So the obvious, or it's, it's you're gonna need this revival. It's gonna be able to have synergy with the Cosmo Tinkan. Really awesome plays going on. For the extra deck, he wins one Sea Monster Thessius. This card's outright outrageous, okay? So it's an instant fusion target, and it's a tuner to make the ultimate Azokan play. He runs one, two, three, four, five level fives inside of the main board. One copy of Panzer Dragon. Um, ultimately, you can activate this, summon the Panzer Dragon, and end your turn. Panzer Dragon goes to the graveyard, and it allows you to destroy one card on your opponent's, or one card on the field. So really good right there at the very case. And then one copy of Norden. So uh, Jonathan has definitely was able to utilize all three copies of Instant Fusion. And it, it really helps being able to not have a dead Instant Fusion. All of them are alive. For Synchros, one copy of Ultimate Azokan. Like I said, any of the, the level five ships plus Sea Monster Theseus and another spell card in your hand to set will trigger, or trap card, will trigger the Ultimate Azokan to Special Summon Void Ogre Dragon, Crystal Wing Dragon, Scrap Dragon, or Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. All really good cards in the strategy. Next, for Exceeds, one copy of Gaia Dragon Thunder Charger. I actually made this card quite a bit, especially when you use number 61 Volcasaurus's effect. One copy of Cyber Dragon Infinity that pels along with the Cyber Dragon Nova. One Utopia Lightning, that is your Norden target. So after you Norden your monster from your graveyard to your side of the field, you make the Utopia package. Uh, and then one copy of Constellar Politis because this card is really good. The, unfortunately, it can't be made with the Cosmo Delta Shadow, but you still have Cyber Dragon, your Slip Riders, and your Panzer Dragons to make it. So it's not that, you know, bad. For the side deck, he runs three copies of uh, Game Sale, the Sea Turtle, Turtle Kaiju. There's obviously some big threats like Untargetable or Undestructible Crystal Wing. That is a huge problem to this deck, but then you just give it a Gamma Seal and you keep playing with your deck. Um, two copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, really good against this format, so good against so many great decks. Uh, Raigeki and Dark Holes for board clearance. Forbidden Chalices, you guys already know what it is. Uh, and then one copy of Twin Twisters, additional back row. Chain Disappearance. This is really good against Zoo and Hero and just about anything. And then he sides the one copy of Vanity Zimkinus. I'm assuming the traps are obviously when he has to go first. This build is really, really, really fun to play. I hope you guys enjoyed the replays and I also hope you guys enjoy our new series. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. If you are in the Las Vegas area, I will see you at UDS tomorrow. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.